Hello and welcome to another video from EarnPad.com. I am Stevie B. Glad to be back with you guys after a long, exhausting couple of days in the real world. We are here in Entropia Universe. We are participating in Easter Mayhem and today we are going to show you how to get Easter boxes and Mayhem tokens as fast as humanly possible. The fastest method that we are able to use to farm both and it is also one of the most eco methods. So guys, get strapped in, get ready. This is going to be a relatively shorter video, but it should help you guys out tremendously. So before we get started, we do have plenty of snorts, smacks, and haterade to go around. <sighs> Glad that we got that out of the way. So the first thing we're going to do, guys, is we're going to hit B. That's going to bring up our event tab. We're going to go down to global instances. And we're going to see all the different mayhem instances there are now there's four pages so this is pretty important the first page we're going to see is all the competition annihilation categories we do not want that the second page is what we want this is the competition defense categories this is what we want if we go further than this we end up seeing defense training and then the practice annihilation we do not want those so we go back to page two and pick the category that is appropriate for your level and your weapon. So for me, I'm category 3 as far as skills go, even though the weapon I'm using is a category 2 weapon. But that's where I'm going to be because this is the fastest way to do it. So I'm going to enter category 3 defense mayhem register. So I will explain as we go why this is the fastest way. First, let's get into the instance. So we see the CDF data interceptor here in the middle. That's what we need to use to start the instance. If you get into the instance and you don't see the data interceptor, just re-log and go through the process again because sometimes it doesn't pop up. Sometimes you just see the, the green operate but no data interceptor, so you have to re-log. It's a glitch. So once I click this, mobs are going to start coming in waves. Now this is what makes this faster than any other way to farm mayhem boxes. As they come, the defense mobs are actually going to be weaker starting off than the regular annihilation mobs. So notice I'm actually killing with a little bit of ease here at the very beginning. Uh, it's only about seven shots. If this was regular annihilation for category three, even if it was practice, uh, this would take probably closer to 30 shots with this weapon. So it's a little bit faster to kill. Now you'll notice there's some dead time in between waves. So there's 10 waves. There will be two different sets of mobs for each wave. You get one at the start of the wave and then one 50% in. So the goal here is to last 10 waves, one entire round, because if you can do that, you're rewarded with one Easter strong box. Also, you will get two mayhem tokens. You get one mayhem token after the fifth wave and one mayhem token after the 10th wave. So why is this faster? To go all the way through this takes roughly 10 to 11 minutes. Now, in that time, we know we're going to get at least two Mayhem tokens, and we know that we're going to get at least one Easter Strong Box. Now, we can also get Mayhem tokens from the mobs that we kill. We can also get Easter Strong Boxes from the mobs that we kill. In addition, you'll notice that on my missions, I have the Destroy Easter Robots daily mission. This is currently stage 8. So I can get Mayhem tokens as I kill and complete that daily. And it just goes 1 through 10 and then you can exit and repeat and just keep going infinitely with it, right? So doing it this way, what we end up with is about every 11 minutes or so, we have at least two Mayhem tokens. We've got at least one Easter Strong Box, and we might get some extra tokens from the daily, we might get some extra tokens from mob drops, and we might get some extra boxes from mob drops. On top of which, the mobs have a lower cost to kill, especially in these first few waves. It's much less healing, much easier to kill. In fact, I'm using a pistol. Most of you guys will probably be using an Armatrix LR of some sort, the long rifle. Um, either the 10 or the 15 for category one would be preferable. That will actually allow you to kill many of these mobs in defense super easy without them ever even getting to you to do damage. Um, so that being said, guys, this is literally the fastest way to farm boxes because the alternative is to do practice or competition annihilation. So here's the problem with that. Yes, as we kill those creatures, we still get boxes. As we kill those creatures, we still get token drops, right? It's not going to be more or less than in here. And in here, we've got a lower cost to kill. 
meaning we can kill more creatures with the same amount of cost, and that gives us more loot chances uh, to have more loot events, which gives us a higher percentage of boxes in general. So overall, over a couple of days, you're not going to get more or less boxes from killing the mobs in defense versus annihilation, but you, over a two-week period, you might have more looting events in defense than you would in annihilation, which could potentially lead to more boxes just from the kills, if that makes sense. Also, potentially, more mayhem tokens just from the kills, if that makes sense. But the big thing is the time. The fact that we get them at a set interval, a uh, mayhem token after every five waves, and a Easter box after every ten waves, that is what really gives us the farming advantage inside of defense. In fact, I just got a box right there from a mob kill. So, it, the reason this is such an advantage is in Annihilation, we have to kill 90 mobs in order to spawn the boss, and the boss will only spawn once every 30 minutes, so we have to do both. We've got to get 90 kills and let 30 minutes go by. And it can be exceedingly hard if you're not running a whole lot of reload pills and a whole lot of high-end reload gear to get 90 kills in 30 minutes. I actually did some test runs, and using the BP-20 without reload pills or anything, just my normal gear, I was right at about the 50 to 52 minute mark, so almost an hour to spawn the boss about four times in a row. It was really close, 50, 51, 52 minutes. So the, bo the boss in Annihilation will drop one box and one token, assuming you're in there alone, and assuming if you're not in there alone, you do more damage than the other guy. That means you're gonna get one box and one token roughly every 45, 50, 55 minutes, depending on how fast you kill. And that's if you're able to kill that fast, if you're able to do it economically without having to do a whole lot of healing. And that's totally taking the mob drops out of the equation. So looking at that, Annihilation gives us one box, one token as a reward for being in there roughly every 45 minutes to an hour. Versus in that same amount of time, we can get four to five times as many with defense because we're working on an every 10 minute scale. And actually the tokens are gonna be double that. So I'm ending phase five right now. This is the end of wave five. And you'll notice in the upper right hand corner of my screen, I'm about to get a mayhem token. Right there, mayhem token. Now that's because I got through phase five. When I get through phase 10, then once uh, wave 10 is done, I'll get another token and I'll get a box. So I've already got one token, I've already got one box, I've been in here for literally five minutes and 53 seconds. So I've just matched in five minutes and 53 seconds what I would expect to get after about 45 minutes in an, in, in an annihilation arena. So that said, yes, I could potentially get some drops from the mobs in Annihilation, but all things considered, the, the drop rate is going to be about the same. So really, the big difference is just the speed. And the speed is not even close. Defense is so much faster, it's absolutely ridiculous. So I had done this last year. This year, the reason I held off making this video for a day or two, I wanted to be absolutely sure I was not going to be able to find a mob outside of Mayhem that was dropping boxes. There are some mobs outside of the Mayhem instance, just regular everyday mobs, that do occasionally drop Mayhem boxes, but it's only at specific Mayhems, or so I am told. Easter is not one of them, I was hoping it was. If you guys have found a mob on any planet that is outside of a Mayhem instance that drops Mayhem boxes in loot, let me know. Shoot me a private message in game. Let me know, and I will give you a 15 ped reward just for letting me know. Now, I am specifically talking about Easter. I've been looking for a mob outside of Mayhem itself, outside of one of these instances, that will drop Easter boxes. So far, I have not found it. The first person to report such a mob to me and that I'm able to verify will receive a 15 ped reward just for providing me with the information. Um, I do know that there is at least one non Easter event that is a mayhem that there are mobs on Arcadia that certain mobs do drop boxes however we're going to be waiting a good probably six months or so before we see that happen I will put that live on the channel when it does happen but it's definitely several mayhems away so guys it, like I said if you know of something that is currently actively dropping Easter boxes by all means let me know if I'm able to verify 
I will definitely give you the first person to let me know that 15 ped reward gladly. Outside of that, this by all math, by all logic, seems like it is going to be hands down the absolute fastest way to farm. Now here's one of the problems that I do have with this guys. Whenever you get to the end of your run, you're going to have a little bit of a problem. That's because there's no good way to really exit the defense instance. And I think this is more of a programming glitch than anything. So in Annihilation, we have the same arena, but we have an exit teleporter. So whether we're doing regular Annihilation or practice Annihilation, it doesn't matter. We can exit whenever we want. We just run over by the terminals and we're good to go. Um, defense, not so much. The terminals simply are not there. If you run too far outside the arena, you simply die and revive in the middle of the arena again, which is terribly unhelpful. Um, so the big problem is how do we exit? Well, dying doesn't help because if we die, we're just going to respawn right by the creatures that we're trying to kill, but we're going to have no health. So they're probably just going to kill us endlessly. So the only way to really get out of the instance that I found is one of two things. There's two different methods that I use. The first is at some point after you reach your goal, you actually just let the, intercept, the uh, data interceptor get destroyed. That's the first way because when you do that, then the exit will actually pop up. The problem is the exit teleporter pops up next to the data interceptor. So at that point, there's probably so many mobs around the data interceptor, you're not actually going to be able to make it to the exit. I've only made it to the exit once this morning. Um, if you can actually get to the exit and click on it, all the mobs will instantly die. So that is helpful, but you guys will see here in just a second, there's usually so many mobs around it that it's virtually impossible to make that happen. So the second method that I use is I let it get destroyed, I die, I revive, I die again, and then I essentially wait out the timer. There's about a five minute timer after the data interceptor gets destroyed, and then the instance essentially closes. So if that happens, you can just wait it out. The way I prefer to do it is whenever I get to that point and the data interceptor has officially been destroyed, at that point I will just log out, and then I give it a few minutes and I log back in, and then I should be, you know, a couple of minutes later, I, sh I should be outside of the instance wherever I originally was whenever I first came into the instance. That is literally the easiest way I've found to do it so far. Um, you guys will also notice that there are multiple types of robots inside of defense. Not all of them are the same. Uh, clearly, some of them are bigger and better than others. So part of the reason I'm having trouble even holding off just wave one is because of the fact that I am in the category three competition arena, which is much more difficult considering I'm using a category two weapon. In fact, I might not make it to the end of wave 10. It's gonna be very close. I'm going to try. So what I'm gonna do I'm just going to try and get them off the interceptor if I can. Yep, okay, so I got them off the interceptor. And that's going to be really, really close. Am I going to make it? Yes, I made it. Okay, woo! By literally a hair. So notice I get my reward. I get my Easter Strongbox and my one token. If you make it all the way to the end of round 10, then, like I said, you do get the Easter Strongbox and the token. You also get heal per second as a buff which obviously is not helping me right and this is what i'm talking about once that interceptor gets destroyed the biggest problem that you have is every time you revive you literally don't even have time to heal so uh, you really don't want to die you want to avoid dying at all costs that's why i highly recommend the lr15 the lr10 if you're going to be in category one just because of the fact it's going to allow you to kill from distance um, I could, if I was using a rifle, I'd be getting many, many more shots off than I am now because I have to actually run to get in range with my pistol. So, like I said, guys, it's it's way easier with a rifle. Obviously, it's also better if you're using something that has the right type of DPS for the category that you're actually in. I am very, very much under the DPS limit. Um, I've got like 42 DPS at the moment. And I think the category limit for category three is like 59 or 59.9 or, 59 or 60. So I'm a good 15 to 18 DPS under, which is not where you want to be. So again, notice the problem is every time I revive, I just keep dying, right? 
So I did make it to the end of 10 waves, which is why the data interceptor went from like literally 0% life left back up to about 20%. But now obviously it's going to go down very, very quickly. So the big question here is how do I get out? Well, the easiest way to get out, like I said, is just let the interceptor get blown up and then log out, which is ex exactly what I'm going to do. So I want you guys to actually see it get blown up. I want you to see the exit open up and then you'll see why you're not going to be able to get to it and logging is just your best option. So guys, I'm going to leave it there for today. That is going to be by far the fastest way to farm Easter boxes and Mayhem tokens during Easter Mayhem 2020. I hope you guys are already well on your way. Notice that it just got destroyed. There's my official placement and there's the exit right there. So if I revive right here and the exit is right there, how am I supposed to get there? There's literally no way for me to revive here and run over there without getting killed by all these guys. I don't even have time to heal myself to keep myself from getting killed, much less make it over there and hit it. Like I said, I've done it once out of like 20 attempts. So the easier way is just to log. So just to let you guys know, the Stevie B Fund A investment fund is officially open. Shares are officially trading hands. Shares are only one pet apiece, 7.5% fixed return on investment. One of the best investments I have ever made in game. It has treated me very, very well over the next 18 months. There's only a few days left before the next payout. So be sure to get in now. Um, shoot me a PM in game, shoot me mail in game. I've got an entire thing about it that I can shoot you if you wanna find out more information. And then to invest, all you gotta do is feel comfortable, ask me any questions you have, and just shoot me a, a message and say, hey, here's how many shares I'm wanting. I know they're pet a piece, where do I have to meet you? Um, I think we've already got quite a few investors who are gonna be very, very, very happy with the returns. Like I said, that first payout's coming in just a few days. So guys, definitely be sure and get in on it. I also was able to get in on a second investment that is actually related to the A fund. It is going to very soon be made into the B fund. It's going to be a variable rate investment. However, it is an equally good opportunity. That's why I've jumped on it. That's why I'm going to have you guys an opportunity to jump on it also. If they're going to keep pumping out crap shares for you guys, I'm going to pump out good investments for you guys. That's the goal. That's the name of the game because that's how you win. It's all about cash flow and residual income in Entropia. So guys, I hope this has helped you out a ton. I hope you're able to farm a, a ton of Mayhem boxes, a ton of Mayhem tokens. Remember, you can always trade those tokens in for pills that you can then turn around and resell. For now, I'm going to leave it right there. I'll be back with another video for you guys a little bit later this evening. I'm hoping, if time permits, I will try and keep them coming as long as they're helping, as long as you guys are learning and earning, I'll keep pumping them out. So to all the haters out there, all I have to say is, to everybody else to all the stevies who are watching thank you for subscribing thank you for liking the videos we could not do it without you guys we really really appreciate all the support you guys have given us and we hope you're able to farm a ton of boxes and a ton of tokens head over to earnped.com because when you earn we earn and that's the best way you can support us we will see you guys very very soon i hope all the stevies have a great easter take care guys